everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Understanding the Biggest Inbound Marketing Channel in the World. My name is Sarah Gonzalez and I will be facilitating your webinar today. Today we will be looking at why AdWords work, how to build and optimise your campaign and how to report on and improve your results. So today's webinar will be hosted by Jeremy Decker from Click Click Media. Jeremy has been working on AdWords accounts since 2006 and is here to provide us with his tips and advice from working with thousands of Australian organisations. How are you today? I'm very well, thanks Sarah. How are you? Good. Um, let's get started. Let's get straight into it. All right, great. Uh, well, thanks for that introduction, Sarah. Um, so today, as Sarah mentioned, we'll be talking about AdWords and understanding uh, what I think is the biggest inbound marketing channel in the world. Uh, now, if I wanted to tell you absolutely everything there is to know about AdWords, we'd probably be here for about a month. So what I've tried to do with today's, uh, today's webinar is to really give you the information you need to firstly understand why AdWords is so important for your business and why it's so important to use it. Uh, and secondly, um, how to create and optimize a campaign that will work well for your business. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, now I go by a couple of names, but when I'm not saving the world and fighting crime, I usually go by Jeremy Decker. Uh, I've been working in AdWords management since 06, and during that time I've managed hundreds of campaigns from budgets from anywhere as small as $1,000 a month right through to about half a million a month. Um, you can see some of the brands I've worked for there, but um, I've worked for clients as small as you know your local plumber right through to brands that pretty much everyone in the world would, would have heard of. All right, so just to look at what today's webinar will cover. Um, so firstly, a look at why AdWords works and why it's important for your business. Uh, then we'll move on to how to build a granular AdWords account, optimizing an AdWords account, uh, campaign once you've actually got it set up, uh, and then running experiments in AdWords campaign to increase your performance even further. All right, so first off, to start things off, we've just got a, uh, a poll. Uh, so if you could just answer either A, B, or A, B, C, or D, uh, what level of involvement do you have with Google AdWords currently? So A, I directly run Google AdWords. B, I manage staff that run Google AdWords. Three, I manage uh, an agency that does this for me. Or D, I have no involvement with Google AdWords. Great. And if you um, do want to select one of those, um, Yvonne, just select on the radio button next to one, two, three, or four on your screen at the moment, and we can see those live results coming through now. Right. So it looks like most people so far are uh, going with option D. Uh, so most people have no involvement with Google AdWords, which is fine. Um, I'll try to make it uh, as basic as possible just for the people that uh, aren't really too uh, familiar with AdWords. Um, but some of the stuff will be a little bit more intermediate. So um, feel free to ask any questions uh, as we go through the webinar, and I'll try to answer them as, as best I can. I'm just also going to turn off um, the webcams now so we can focus on the content of the presentation um, and also for those people who may be experiencing bandwidth issues. But um, as we get started, please feel free to type your questions into the box below and we'll turn on the webcams once again when we get to the end of the presentation. All right. So moving on. So let's get started with understanding what drives the click. Now, when it comes to AdWords, there are two main networks that you're going to be uh, getting traffic from. First being the search network, uh, which is a proactive user base. So people are actually typing something into a search engine to find some kind of either some information or looking to use a service or buy a product. Uh, and secondly, uh, the display network, which is more of a reactive network. So you might have uh, ads being displayed on a blog, for example, or a news site like Sydney Morning Herald. Um, with, with the search network, there are going to be two main types of people. Firstly, people that are looking for a product or service, so they'll be typing in things like buy movies online, uh, car service Sydney, professional resume writer. With an AdWords campaign for a business, these are the types of people that you really should spend the most time uh, trying to focus on. Uh, they're, they're actively looking to use a service or product, so they've, they've taken the initiative and these are the people that you're probably going to have the best chance at converting into a, a, an actual customer. The second type of people that use a search engine are people that are looking for information. Um, they'll be typing in things like movie session times, uh, car service guide or how to, and things like resume writing tips as well. Now, those people, although they might not be ready to buy a product or use a service right away, they might be in the future. So 
it isn't worth it isn't worth completely avoiding these people. Uh, although you do want to have these two types of traffic separated, if at all possible, because the first type, the people that are actually looking for something straight away, they're usually a lot more likely to convert into a customer for you. Uh, when it comes to the display network, now because your users aren't actually looking for something, they're just browsing the internet, it is important to take a, a different approach to your ad content. So firstly, you want to be highly relevant and you want to try and meet an immediate need that, that the user might have. So uh, say for example, if someone's looking for cheap movie tickets, you want to try and address that in the ad, um, same day car service for example. Um, the second uh, strategy with display is really to highlight a really appealing offer. So uh, something for free, for example, is, is always great to use. Um, a value add, so you can see that the example I've given is uh, free five-year car service, uh, and thirdly, maybe even a percentage discount. Um, the reason that you want to try and use these things is because when someone's actually looking for something, they're a lot easier to convert, but with the, with the display network, you're interrupting their browsing, and for that reason, you've really got to make the ad stand out and give them a, a really good reason to actually click your ad and hopefully to turn into a customer as well. Okay, so where do AdWords ads appear? Now, what I've shown here is a few examples of uh, what kind of ads you can use with AdWords and where they appear. The top one in the middle is a standard search ad, and you can see a few different AdWords ads there. Now, although this is the oldest and probably the most boring type of AdWords advertising, it probably is the most important as well. Uh, and that should be clear as to, as, as to how it works. I mean, you, people are typing in something Google and you're showing them uh, an ad that fits that that need. Uh, this this type of advertising will always be the best converting, or almost always anyway. Um, so you should definitely start start with this type of advertising. And that should be the fundamentals when it comes to your to your campaign. Uh, the left hand side image there shows some PLA or product listing ads, uh, and that basically allows an e-commerce store to put their products right into the Google search page. And it, really, it works really well for very specific product-related searches. So if someone's looking for buy five-piece dinner set, for example, that, uh, that search result would show a bunch of images uh, for products for sale um, for five-piece dinner sets, hopefully. Um, this is a fairly new feature when it comes to AdWords. Uh, it's only come out in the last few months uh, for Australian users. But it's the conversion rates that you see for, the, for this type of advertising are, are pretty phenomenal. Uh, and the fact that people, not many people are using it right now means that it's fairly low in terms of the cost per click as well. So if you're running an e-commerce store, this is uh, an absolute must. Uh, I don't take on an AdWords client uh, that's got an e-commerce store without highly recommending this type of advertising. So definitely look into it if you are running an e-commerce store. And uh, it's, a, it's a, bit of a, a bit of a hurdle to get it up and running, given that Google are pretty strict on the product feeds that they allow. But uh, once it is up and running, you really see the benefits to it. Uh, moving on to the bottom uh, screenshot in the middle, so this is a YouTube ad. Uh, you've, I'm sure you've seen these ads before, uh, most people find them pretty annoying, but they are great for branding, uh, just putting an ad right before a video in YouTube. Uh, now this usually won't convert quite as well in terms of direct response uh, compared to something like the standard search ads because people aren't actually looking for anything, they're just watching a video, but it is a great way to get your brand out there. Uh, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world after Google, so definitely a huge user base uh, and uh, you know the, the amount of eyes that you can get over your brand for this type of advertising is, is pretty huge, so it's, uh, it's, it's a great way of, uh, of, of getting some brand awareness. And lastly, the right-hand side uh, screenshot just shows a display ads on what looks like Sydney Morning Herald. So these are just some banner ads you can see at the top right-hand side there and also on the right-hand side. Again, uh, because people are actually looking for something like they are with search, it, usually the direct response conversion rate won't be as great, but it is a great way to uh, get, your, get your brand out there and to even showcase a particular product if uh, it does need to be done so visually. Just on that, Jeremy, um, so we have a question from John. With these three types, is this more expensive than standard AdWords? Not at all, no. Uh, with the PLA or the Google Shopping ads, where you see the actual product in the search results, right now for Australian traffic, that's actually cheaper in most cases because not a lot of advertisers are using it. Um, we actually went to a Google Engage meeting with a bunch of uh, AdWords management companies in, in attendance, and the presenter actually uh, asked the question, who's using PLA ads right now? And out of about 200 people, there was about two 
people to put their hands up. Wow. So yeah, even AdWords management uh, companies aren't really using this product that much these they are right now. So uh, for that reason, the CPCs or the cost per clicks are quite low. I'm sure that will change, but the fact that the conversion rate uh, is usually higher than a standard search ad for this type of advertising, the actual cost per sale uh, I think will always be lower than standard search. Mm. Um, and also just quickly before we move on, um, in relation to your ads appearing on YouTube and also Sydney Morning Herald, uh, Samantha's asked, do you need to coordinate directly with third parties such as YouTube or The Age to have your advertisements appear on their site or is it done completely separate? No, you don't have to coordinate with them whatsoever. So these are all uh, placements that are within the AdWords search network, display network. So what you would do is you'd set up a display campaign for uh, Sydney Morning Herald, for example. You'd set up a standard display campaign, um, set it up in the exact same way that you would in any display campaign. Uh, and if you wanted to specifically target Sydney Morning Herald, for example, then you could do so in the placement uh, level of your, of your campaign. Okay, great. Let's move on to direct response and what that's all about. Okay, so the next slide uh, is showing a bit of a, um, a funnel when it comes to direct response versus interruption. And what this funnel tries to convey is the almost the buying cycle for, for the average user. So when you're, at, when you're running an AdWords campaign, there are going to be people that are going to be at different levels of the buying process. Some people might fit the demographic uh, of the people that you're trying to sell to, but they won't be looking to buy a product. They're not actively running searches, uh, and they might not even need, know that they need the product just yet. That just might be, that just might fit the type of people that could use your product. So that would be the people that you'd be looking to target at the top of this funnel. And a great way to do that, to target these people, is via display. Um, display is typically a lot cheaper than search ads to run, uh, just because the network is a lot bigger, so you've got a lot more choices in terms of, uh, of where, you're be where your ads are being shown. With search, obviously, there's only one Google search engine, so it's pretty competitive, uh, but with display, there's you know, hundreds of thousands of different placements in the network, so uh, it's a great way to get, uh, get a lot of reach out there in, in the market, but it's not quite as expensive as a standard search, uh, and that's good because the people that you're attracting not, won't uh, typically be as, uh, as ready to buy as people that are uh, being proactive and running a search. Um, you can see that as we get further down that funnel, uh, we go more into the, the ready to buy uh, users and all the way down to the direct response search. So that's people that are typing in, you know, buy Nike shoes, uh, finds an AdWords agency in Sydney, those kind of searches that indicate they are looking for a service or a product. Uh, and what you can do to supplement these, uh, these types of, uh, of, of campaigns as well is something called remarketing. Now, remar remarketing is a way of re-engaging with the users that have previously been on your site. So you run a campaign, people come to your site and they might not make a purchase or, or make an inquiry for whatever reason. It might be that they've got distracted, they might be at work. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why they uh, might come to your site and just just leave without contacting you or making a purchase. So for that reason, we want to try and re-engage with these people and uh, make sure they don't forget the brand or the website. And remarketing is a way that you can actually do that. So you put a bit of code on your website and from there, Wherever they go on, on the uh, AdSense network uh, moving forward, they will see your ads uh, a lot of the time or whatever frequency you set. Um, some people see this as being a little bit invasive sometimes, so what you can actually do is set frequency caps on this so that it doesn't bother people too much, but that's really up to you as a business owner uh, to to determine what that looks like. So it doesn't look like you're just stalking people. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know that I've I've been on sites before where no matter where I go, they've they follow me around everywhere, which is a little bit scary uh, and quite annoying sometimes as well. But you can do it in a way that uh, to try and avoid that. Great. Just by setting frequency caps. Okay. So just before we move on, I've got a quick question for our audience. Um, so. Why do you think it's important to understand your target audience in AdWords? It's one thing to set up a campaign, but uh, understanding the audience is completely different, and it's, but it's also very important. So um, if anyone can just type any responses to this in the bottom left-hand corner in the chat box, um, and while we're getting some questions out of people, and um, if you do have a response to this, please type it in. Just quickly in relation back to the YouTube um, advertising that you are talking about earlier, John's just asked, I take it that the YouTube is a video that you'll need, you'll need to create a video for something like this. Yeah, the type of ad that I showed in the screenshot does, but having said that, you can also run text ads on the YouTube network. Uh, you might have seen those when you actually 
play a video and you see that text out at the bottom of the of the video, that's a type of a type of AdWords ad as well. Uh, and so you, you've got you've got your choices really. You can you can run a search ad that uh, that is displayed in that way, or you can run the video ads uh, that show before the video. But um, that's all, all something that's done in in the AdWords interface. Mm. Um, and sorry, I did bring up the poll earlier, um, just in relation to your question, Neil, but I did take it down. Um, this is just generating some responses. Um, so in terms of why people think it's important to understand their target audience in AdWords, we have a few responses. Um, so Sylvia said for events that they're planning to run, Kavita saying keywords, um, John saying so that you can directly tailor your message to them. Um, to get the highest conversions um, and to target ads better to search phrases. Would you say that that's what you would be thinking? Absolutely, yeah. A lot of these answers are right on the money, especially uh, Alison's answer to target ads to, to better uh, to better search phrases. So the more that you can understand uh, how your audience searches and, and their browsing habits, uh, the easier it is to put together a keyword list that, um, that really matches that and uh, you could um, and with that, you can actually create campaigns with um, with higher budgets for the keywords that you think will work best. Um, obviously, you want to wait till, until the data comes in to tell you exactly what works and what what doesn't. But if the the sooner you know that, the better. Uh, so it's very important to be inside the the mind of your target audience and to know as much about them as possible before you even get started. Mm. Definitely makes sense. Um, and just before we're moving on to a new section now, um, I just want to answer Yanni's question. So, how long does remarketing go for? So, how long do you follow them for a campaign? Uh, you can actually set set that. Um, so, you could uh, set it for a few months, for example. You could set it for one month. Uh, it, it is user controlled or, or advertiser con controlled. So, it really comes down to what you'd like to uh, set as your preference there. Uh, I think. In order for you to uh, uh, determine what that should look like, you need to look into what the um, the average, uh, I guess, um, lead time is for your product or your service. If you've determined that it takes about you know three weeks for you to uh, turn a conversion into a sale, for example, I'd uh, maybe run a remarketing campaign that tracks people for about four weeks. Uh, just uh, so you could use that as a bit of a guide. Okay, so moving on to the next section, building granular campaigns. Now I'll explain a little bit further down what granular means, um, but I'll just jump straight into it. Okay, so first off we'll just start with another poll. What would you be looking to promote with uh, your own AdWords campaign? So A, products or a product, B, services, C, events, or D, fundraising? And I've set this up, Jeremy, so people think, can select more than one response as well. Um, but perhaps if there's something outside of these four things, um, feel free to type them in the chat box. That's right, yeah. Information. Okay, great. Well, it looks like most people are going with B, services. Uh, lead gen campaigns, uh, they're definitely a great way to advertise using Google. Um, but I'd be keen to hear more about the types of services people are, are looking to promote. It's uh, it's looking pretty even for the rest right now. Great, we'll stop that poll then. Um, services came in at 69%. All right, so moving on to creating your campaign. I think I've just jumped one ahead there. Okay, so the very first place you want to start when creating a new campaign is your landing page or landing pages. So this is going to tell you exactly what you're advertising, um, what your selling points are, what your calls to action should be, and that really dictates how the campaign is set up and what your ads look like as well. So things you want to be looking for on your landing page are firstly, what am I looking to promote with this campaign? So what I've got here is a screenshot of the Redback Conferencing webinar landing page for today's conference. Uh, and we actually created a campaign to advertise this. So using this landing page, you can see pretty clearly that we're looking to advertise a, a webinar, an AdWords webinar. So that would be the really the fundamental of our keyword research, trying to find keywords around uh, that type of, of product or offering, and from there we can we can research you know keyword themes that are related to that that type of service, uh, and that's really where we start. That's that we start with the the actual structure of the campaign, which uh, ties in with the next slide. So I, I see quite a lot of uh, of campaigns that are managed by either other agencies or business owners, and the probably the most common mistake I see is people creating an account with one campaign, one ad group, and one set of keywords. 
And that creates a few different problems. Uh, firstly, only having one campaign means that you can only create, you can only have one set budget cap for all of your keywords. And what most people will see is that uh, from, from all the different keywords in their account, some are going to convert really well and some are going to just uh, uh, you know, get clicks but not really convert into sales or leads. So you want to be able to separate those two types of keywords. You want to have uh, a campaign for keywords that convert really well with a, a quite a high daily budget cap. And then you want to have a, a campaign or campaigns uh, with the other keywords in them that don't really convert that well, but still might be worth advertising. And that kind of ties in with that, that um, sales funnel as well. Some people might not be ready to buy, so they're not going to convert as well straight away, but it's still worth advertising to those people. Uh, the second problem with that is that when you have one ad group for all of your keywords, it's, it's kind of hard to create uh, a set of ads that target all of those keywords individually. You're going to have some pretty generic ads, most likely. So what we want to do is uh, ideally have a set of ads for every keyword. The structure that I actually go with is creating, is creating a keyword or an ad group for every keyword. And that way we can write highly relevant targeted ad text for each and every keyword in the account. So that screenshot uh, there, the, fl the flowchart actually shows you what uh, an AdWords account structure should look like. Uh, you, you, a good place to start would be by creating a campaign for each service or each product. But then you also might want to create a variation for high converters versus low converters, uh, exact match versus uh, broad match. There's a lot of different things you can do with having uh, with, with campaigns and, and campaign names and you don't want to be scared to have a lot of campaigns. Uh, it might actually be very beneficial to have 100 campaigns if that suits your, your business and your website. Uh, but definitely stay away from having just one. Uh, it's the most common problem I see with uh, AdWords accounts and it can destroy uh, the return on, on investment for your campaign completely. Keyword research. So. Once you've, got, once you've had a look at your website, this is the next place to start with. Uh, there's actually a really cool tool that Google provides for free called the Google Keyword Planner. Now, using AdWords Webinar, for example, I've typed this right into the AdWords Keyword Planner, and after I've, I've punched that in, it's given me a bunch of different keyword ideas that might be related to, uh, to the webinar, or they might not be. So I've just gone through this list, uh, checked, a, uh, checked a box next to each keyword that I think is relevant, and that's built my, uh, my keyword list. Now there are going to be keywords that uh, might be not as relevant as AdWords webinar, for example, if we were looking to advertise this, uh, this webinar. There could be things like AdWords tips, uh, AdWords advice. Now these, AdWords, these uh, keywords might not be as likely to convert as, say, AdWords webinar, for example, as the keyword, but they're still worth using, uh, and for that reason we could just create separate campaigns for these keywords with lower budgets, so we're not spending too much on those keywords, but we are still getting some exposure there. It would be, a nice, uh, it'd be you know, nice if we could only use AdWords webinar and get huge volume for just that keyword, but the fact of the matter is, is that there's not going to be all that much search volume out there for that one keyword, so we need to go for the other keywords that might not be as likely to convert, but uh, still could be relevant and still could get some, uh, some good, uh, good results for us. Okay, so creating ads that work. Now, the thing to remember with ads is that Really, this is the first point of entry after someone's run a search or seen your ad online. Um, there is one formula that tends to work better than others, and that's using the actual keyword in the headline, using a, a very strong selling point in the second description line, and then having a call to action. Uh, I always recommend having at least three ad variations for each ad group, but and you could test you could test the, the placement of those different selling points and the and the use of the keyword in the ad. But uh, the important thing is to just test different things. Um, you want to give people a very good reason to click your ad instead of one of your competitors' ads. So, but it's it's, it's also important to get a little bit creative as well, especially when you're in a a very competitive space. Uh, in our ads, for example, you can see the screenshot there. Where I've I've uh, shown you some of Click Click Media's uh, adverts that are running. Now, with, with these, uh, we could have put the fact that we have no contracts in the ads. Uh, we, know we could have put the fact that we have over 30 years combined experience. But with our industry, it's, uh, I, I dare say, one of the most competitive industries when it comes to AdWords. So we've had to become very creative in what we actually uh, put in the ads just to get people's attention. And you can see that uh, there in these two examples. 
We've also got an example of a uh, display ad there on the right hand side as well. Uh, we've tried to keep that pretty simple, but also uh, appealing to people. So it's again, it's just a matter of testing and seeing what works for your business in particular. Uh, no one thing will work uh, uh, well for uh, two different businesses. So you need to really tailor, the, tailor this to your own business and just keep te constantly test and test different things to see what works uh, for your audience to see what they respond to best. Do you have any results on those three, Jeremy, in terms of which one did work best? These two ads, funnily enough, in terms of the text ads, work a lot better than the rest of our ads. Okay. We've, uh, we, have tr we have tried putting things like our, our selling points, our calls to action, uh, the fact that we have no contracts and uh, over 30 years combined experience, but these ads work best simply for the fact that I think that uh, in our industry it is very competitive and a lot of people might say the same thing. So yeah, it's, not, it's important not just to have your selling points, but you also want to make sure that it, your ads are different from what your competitors are doing as well. Mm. Uh, and you really want this to stand out because when someone goes to a Google search page and runs a search, they've got a lot of options there. Mm -hmm. So you need to be the one that really stands out. Be different. Yeah, that's right. You need to be different. Okay, ad extensions. So ad extensions is uh, a, a little bit of extra content that you can actually put on your ads. I'm sure that if you've used Google in the last year, you've, you've seen these in action. Uh, some, some of the popular ad extensions uh, include call extensions, so you can actually put a phone number next to your ad or just under your ad so that people can call without even going to your website. Uh, and then there's something called site links as well, which allows you to actually put additional links below your, um, below your ad. So you might want to send people directly to your Contact Us page, you might want to send them to a special promotion, um, but I'd always recommend for a lead gen or service based business uh, to use call extensions. It's great for people like plumbers because people might be on their phone, they might be in a rush, uh, they might be looking to just call someone straight away and get some help. Mm -hmm. So if they can, if they can do that without even going to a website, then that's a better user experience uh, and it just means hopefully more leads for your, for your business as well. Yeah. Uh, in, ter in terms of an e-commerce website, site links will always be very powerful and one of the newer ad extensions as well is something called review extensions. So if you've got a, uh, a third party review somewhere uh, on a third party website, uh, it'd be great to actually use that in your AdWords campaign and a little review snippet will appear under your ad. It's a great way of, of uh, promoting confidence in your in your brand and your business, uh, and you know again a great thing to test alongside site links and call extensions as well. Google have become very good at uh, at actually showing you the results of each of these site links now. So uh, the, the the data's there. Uh, all you need to do is uh, is analyze it and see what works best for your ads. Okay, and this is probably the most important part when it comes to setting up a campaign, conversion tracking. Uh, a big, another common mistake I see when it comes to uh, people running an AdWords campaign is that they simply aren't tracking conversions. Um, conversion tracking allows you to put a bit of code on either your thank you for uh, inquiring page or thank you for purchasing page, and from there, uh, your AdWords campaign will tell you exactly what keywords and what ads and what days of the week, what weeks of the month are actually resulting in conversions. And if you have any interest at all at improving your AdWords results, then this is an absolute must. You need to know what's, what keywords are actually working for your business, not just getting clicks, and which, which uh, keywords are wasting money and just getting clicks and nothing else. Okay, so that moves us on to section three, database optimizations. So it's one thing to have a really good campaign set up, but it's another thing to have that campaign optimized and fine-tuned from that point onwards. Uh, up until this point, you're really just uh, doing a bit of guesswork, but once the data starts coming in, that's when you can start actually making intelligent decisions to improve your results. Okay, so a quick poll. How familiar are you with the AdWords interface? So option A, I've logged into AdWords once or twice. B, I've often made uh, changes to an AdWords account. C, I can use AdWords editor. And D, I, haven't, I have no involvement with Google AdWords. And I suppose we'll be going into this in a moment, Jeremy, but is it quite an easy interface to use? Not at first. Uh, <laughs> there is quite a steep learning curve. Uh, it's, and it's evolved a lot and it, it, it's constantly evolving as well. Um, I started managing campaigns back in 2006 and back then there were no ad extensions. Um, there were really only keywords, ad groups, campaigns, negative keywords uh, and not much else. Mm. So it's 
gone a long way in the last nine years, and uh, they're always, almost monthly, adding new features. One of the new features when it comes to display is actually uh, parental status targeting. So uh, this just came out this week. You can actually run a campaign that targets only people that Google have determined as being parents, or other people that, have, that Google have determined as, as not being parents. So. Yeah, I know. The amount of stuff that they're actually tracking, uh, is, it's getting scarier and scarier, actually. Uh, you can you can track a lot in terms of age, gender, where people have been uh, to before with their browsing habits. Uh, it's A lot is being tracked that we don't, don't know about, so it's uh, very insightful as well. Powerful. Mm. Um, so there we have 69% uh, for option four, so I have had no involvement with Google AdWords. So this section is going to obviously provide people with some more insight on that. That's right. Yeah, hopefully it isn't uh, too advanced. Uh, but again, you know, I, well, I've got my email address at the bottom of each slide. So if you're confused about anything at all, you can either ask questions at the end of this webinar, or I'd be more than happy for you to email me directly, uh, and I'd be happy to help you out with uh, any questions you might have. Okay. So firstly, auditing a campaign. Uh, now this is very important because. No, I've I've seen uh, I've come across campaigns where people have run a campaign and then six months down the track they've realised that their their location targeting is incorrect. So it's it's very important to very regularly go over your campaign, look at the landing pages that are working, which ones are not working quite so well, uh, and this is where testing comes into play. So if you've got uh, regular tests set up, then Something you can do, you know, every week, every every fortnight, every month, is go in and just audit these tests and see what's performing and what's not for you. Uh, common things to look out for in an audit are, you know, what keywords are working and which ones aren't. Um, in an AdWords campaign, you typically find that only 10% of your keyword lists will be the ones that actually convert. So you want to make sure that you are focusing on those keywords that are converting. Uh, you also want to look at the different ad tests you've got going on. And more importantly, the actual settings in terms of location targeting and, and budget as well. Okay, so statistically significant optimizations. So once you've got your campaign set up, there's not a whole lot you can do because there's no data coming in. Uh, you've got, you don't know which keywords are working, which ones aren't. So what you need to wait for to happen is for uh, all of the keywords in your campaign to actually get some traffic. And that way, a bit of a story uh, gets told. You might find that you get a keyword that gets 10 clicks and out of those 10 clicks it's gotten two conversions, which is great, that's a 20% conversion rate. In that case, you'd want to flag that particular keyword as a, uh, a high potential keyword. But when it comes to optimization, there, there is a certain amount of data that you do need uh, in order to be confident that you are being told a, an accurate story. Um, a rule of thumb that I go by for the ad level testing is a thousand impressions for each ad, at the very least. You want to wait for that before before deciding whether an ad's working or not. Um, when it comes to a keyword, I, I'd want to wait for either two or more conversions or a hundred clicks uh, or more. Uh, and just to further explain that, uh, if a keyword has gotten a hundred clicks and no conversions, uh, that's when I'd start to uh, say, well, maybe that keyword's not one worth focusing on, but no less than that. However, if a keyword has gotten two conversions and 50 clicks, that's when I'd, I'd flag that as one that's working quite well. Okay, so where to find the biggest wins? There's a few places that you could uh, focus your attention when it comes to AdWords to, in, to really get the most out of your, uh, your management and your optimization. Uh, one example I've shown here in the screenshot is the search query report. So before you go into this report, you're only going to see the performance of your actual keywords. But your keywords might be very different from what is actually being searched by your traffic in Google. You might have a keyword that's uh, set as buy, sh buy shoes, for example. but your ad could be triggered by someone looking for uh, shoe repair Sydney, just because of the fact that they both include shoe. Uh, it really does depend on your your targeting method um, and your ma your matching uh, types. But for this reason, you want to look at your actual search query reports, and you can find that in, at the in the keyword tab. Uh, but what we often find with this report is that. A lot of searches are irrelevant, and what we can do there is go through and just tick, tick a box to add them uh, as negative keywords. If people don't know what a negative keyword is just yet, uh, that's fine. Well, what, what a negative keyword is is that it pretty much works in the exact opposite way of a regular keyword. If you don't want your ad to appear for any, uh, any search that includes free, then you can add free as a negative keyword, and your ad will never appear when anyone includes free in their search moving forward. So it's very important to have a, a really extensive negative keyword list. Um, 
the way to expand that is by analysing these search query reports. Uh, again, you also want to make sure that you're keeping a close eye on the keyword level performance as well in terms of conversions. Uh, as I said earlier, you know most of your conversions will come from the top, uh, from 10% of your keywords only, and the rest will probably waste the money. So you want to keep a close eye on that, uh, and also landing page testing. That's another another quick win. You always want to test at least two different landing pages on your website, and usually you'll find that one will work a lot better than the other. So that's one thing you want to keep a very close eye on. Because one thing I think we weren't uh, learnt early on, sorry, when we went into it, we just assumed that when someone clicked on um, our AdWords campaign, they go to our website. But it's really about thinking about how you can, because it's a different call to action, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, one one recommendation I, I usually give to, uh, especially service-based industries, is to use a, a special specialty built landing page for AdWords. Uh, when you've got a website that has a lot of pages and a lot of content, people might get lost uh, and distracted, and before you know it, they're off your site and they haven't given you the, their contact details. So one thing that we always recommend testing is testing your website against just a one-page landing page uh, for just for AdWords. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, what you what you find is that when you're using a landing page that has all the relevant information on that one page, uh, your conversion rates can greatly increase. Uh, so that's one thing that you could test. Uh, and uh, but again, you have to be keeping a close eye on those results because it can go both ways. Mm -hmm. You know, your website might work better or your landing page might work better. But until you get the data in, you simply won't know. So it's something you have to keep a very close eye on and always test. Okay, understanding quality score. So quality score is a metric that Google uses uh, to really put a number on how well they think your campaign has been set up and how well it's running. Um, really, to, to understand quality score, all you have to understand is that Google want to get the absolute most amount of revenue out of their search engine as possible. So what that means is that if your ad's getting clicked on uh, more than your competitors, chances are they're going to reward you with a good quality score because for every click on an ad, obviously Google get paid a bit of money. So say a thousand, imp uh, a thousand searches are made on Google each, uh, each minute, they want to make sure they're getting as absolute many clicks out of that as possible uh, for those 1,000 impressions. Um, there's a few different metrics that determine what your quality score is, things like keyword relevance, your landing page relevance, uh, and uh, most importantly, the click-through rate. So out of every 100 impressions uh, or searches, how many clicks do you get for that? Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, re that's really the best way to explain the actual quality score. Really, it's just Google's way of ensuring the profitability of uh, their of their ad network, which drives 99% of their, their revenue. Okay, landing page improvements. Now, we've kind of touched on this uh, just a few slides ago in, in regards to uh, Redback's uh, landing page, but when it comes to a landing page, there's a few things that you want to really highlight. Now, um, what, I've, what I've mentioned here is that you want to make uh, the key information accessible within about five seconds. Now, there's been a lot of research into this, and um, the research shows that if people don't find what they want in about five seconds on your site, they tend to leave pretty quickly. So the key information would be, firstly, the first question I'll ask is, does this website have a, uh, offer what I'm looking for? So you want to have your product or your service description there. Secondly, uh, if you're an e-commerce store, for example, uh, where do you ship to and what does shipping cost? So a good method is to have your shipping information in the header of your website, just so that no matter what uh, page they go to in your site, it's there for them to see. You might have uh, free delivery Australia-wide or free delivery over $100, uh, something that really just gives them some information about the, uh, about the delivery of the product. Uh, if you're a, uh, a service-based business, then you might want to highlight things like, um, you know, we service Sydney-wide or uh, we service Australia-wide or something that localizes a little bit and tells them where you offer it. Uh, and you also want to uh, uh, highlight something that makes you different from your competitors. So you might have no call-out fee or free quotes or, um, you know, 20% discount this month. Just giving them one extra reason to buy with you um, or use your service instead of one of your competitors. But again, this is something that you always want to test as well. So a good way to, to, uh, to test what selling points your, uh, your audience responds to best is to uh, play around with the, what you're highlighting on your landing page and also at the ad level as well. Okay, so this moves us on to the next section, AdWords experiments. Testing, testing, testing. It's, uh, it's the key to improving your results. 
what you should be testing, so things like ad testing, seeing what ad variation your audience responds to best, uh, landing page testing, Testing, so what selling points uh, do your, does your audience like better than, than others? Uh, what um, what different call to action? Uh, you know, what's the performance of those different uh, that different those different calls to actions, and and what different match types works best for your business as well? So um, there are a few different match types to use in terms of keywords in AdWords. Uh, there's you know exact match, broad match modifier, broad match, phrase match. These are all things you can test to see you know um, what drives the best results. Uh, and exploration campaigns. So this is another thing you want to test as well every now and then. Uh, you might find that you're getting some great results with your current campaign and you're just uh, not sure what to target in terms of keywords. What we like to do every now and then with our campaigns once they've reached that mature stage is just coming up with a few different, uh, uh, you know, pretty out there keyword ideas. And uh, it's it's fine to do that as long as you keep the test very tar uh, very controlled and having a campaign that's that's separate to the rest uh, with a very tight budget, and that way you can just get a feel for uh, how these you know different keywords convert. You might find that they actually work really well, and that'll be a whole new keyword area for you, for you to explore in the future. But uh, it's it's important to run these tests just to uh, keep going out there for additional um, exposure. Okay, and uh, using AdWords experiments. So there's actually an inbuilt feature in AdWords that allows you to run uh, real-time experiments. Um, you'll find this by going to your campaign tab, then going to settings, uh, and it'll, it'll, there'll be a little button at the bottom that says start uh, campaign experiment. For example, you might have a landing page that's, uh, um, that's just been created and you want to test it against your website. So you can use this feature to create a 50-50 split test, send half your traffic to your website and then half your traffic to the new landing page. Uh, once you've done that, you'll be able to analyze the results uh, very easily in your reports, see whether the, uh, the control is working better or whether the experiment's working better. And from there, you can make a decision very quickly on what you want to run with moving forward. Okay, well that's about it for today. Um, so just to wrap things up, firstly, know your audience uh, before you try to sell to them. This is very important. Um, secondly, put the time into designing a campaign, being as granular as possible. So not just one campaign or one ad group. Uh, you want to have multiple campaigns to be able to dictate where your budget goes and what keywords you focus on. Uh, thirdly, data dictates almost everything. So you want to use the data that's available to you to make intelligent changes, changes to your campaign. Uh, and fourthly, if it's worth thinking about, it's worth testing. Great. Um, okay, we're going to go to some questions now, just from the audience, um, and I'm just going to move that slide just so people have your details. And we've also got um, an exit survey on the right-hand side, so if you can please complete that and let us know your feedback, that will be much appreciated. Um, so Alison, and I think Linda's also asked a similar question in relation to Google Grants, and we spoke about this before the webinar, actually. Um, so when charities have a Google Grant, which means they get free AdWords, um, is the interface and everything exactly the same? And what is the difference between a normal organisation and a Google Grants account? Sure. Um, well, it was quite some time ago that I last ran a Google Grant account, but it, back then it was exactly the same. So there shouldn't be anything different at all. Um, the only time that an AdWords interface will be different is for people that use... Um, it's AdWords Express, which is a very simplified version of AdWords. That's the only time uh, where the AdWords interface will change. But if you've just gotten a Google grant, it really just means that Google are, um, you know, are, um, are paying for your your advertising. The the interface should be exactly the same. Mm, great. Um, and any more questions, please feel free to type them in the bottom left-hand corner in the chat box. Um, and also, just in relation to um, Quick Click Media as well, so they've got a blog, um, which is sent. How often is your blog sent, Jeremy? Oh, almost <laughs> weekly. Yeah. Um, and also, you've got an AdWords audit tool, which I've used before as well, so um, it's a different way of analysing your AdWords accounts. That's right, yeah. yeah um, okay, well that, that pretty much wraps it up for us. I'm just going to go into Alison's question. Is there anywhere to get training on Google Ads um, and what's the approximate cost? Um, so this really depends on what level of training you want uh, and for how long. Um, we offer training uh, at Click Click Media and there are also um, there's a lot of online resources you can go to as well to, um, to get that. But um, shoot me an email if you'd like. Uh, my email address is jeremy at clickclickmedia.com.au and I'd be happy to point you in the right direction just based on uh, what level of, of school you're at currently uh, and what you're looking to get out of the training. 
Um, and just to remind us, everyone will send an email within 48 hours um, with a copy of the on-demand recording and also details on how you can contact Jeremy directly and link straight to the Click Click blog to get any further information. Um, but I'd personally like to thank um, Jeremy. Finally, we've got you on a webinar. We've been trying for some time now um, for presenting today. And also just quickly mention our charity spotlight for June, um, Red Kite, which is an organisation that we work with and does some amazing things. Um, to build awareness and exposure for our charities, we like to just talk a little bit about them. Um, and here are some links to their website um, and also how you can get involved, how you can find out more about them as well. Um, and here at Redback, we like to promote our charities as much as possible. So if you'd like to get involved um, with our charity program, please feel free to let us know. Um, and thank you once again, Jeremy. And everyone, thank you for your feedback. Uh, we'll be sending out the recording shortly. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, it was fun. Okay. <laughs> Bye.